My dad used to say, if you can fit a piece of dental floss through one of your miters, then it isn't right. So what kind of tolerance are we talking with a piece of dental floss? Uh, it's pretty ridiculous. That's a pretty high standard. And I expect nothing less from you. <laughs> now when you're working on something a little more forgiving, say in the case of a door frame, there's only two miters on that casing. And your run-of-the-mill picture frame will have four, which makes it twice as hard. But today's problem has eight, which makes it even harder. This is a tough one. And to make matters even worse, the project is even less forgiving in this case because, well, you may or may not know this, but just gluing miters like this together is really kind of cheating because it's end grain to end grain and the connection is not very strong. And in the case of an expensive piece of beveled mirror like this, it's heavy, there's a lot at stake, and we want it to last. And thus our problem. How do we get two small pieces of molding like this to join together? In case you're wondering, this molding is a chair rail, and it's been repurposed because I took it off of the top of the paneling in the bathroom that I'm remodeling and I'm using it to cover up the parts on the edge of this mirror where the silver has worn away. This is somewhat of a difficult project and so I have to pay close attention to this and not so much to the video. As such, I'll just kind of give you a conceptual overview of what I'm doing and not so much pay attention to the details. Let's shake off some of the rotten fruit with a little bit of math. I know you like the math. Okay, so what we have here is pretty much a circle because it starts here and ends where it started. Whenever you have a closed loop like that and you want to connect it with angles, then the basis for your math will be 360 degrees. Each time you add a set of angles, you cut that number in half. The minimum number of sides that you can have to close off a loop is three, a triangle. But for Simplicity's sake, let's say that the minimum number is four. If you have four, every time you double that number, you cut the number of your angles in half. And then you have to cut those numbers in half again because there are two parts to every miter. That's the angle that you will set your saw to. So in this case, we have 360 degrees divided by four, divided by two, divided by two, which equals 22 and a half. What makes angles in general so confusing is that they're always with respect to something. On, in the case of a protractor, a, an angle of 45 degrees, say, is 45 degrees with respect to zero. So what 45 degrees is, is if you divide a circle into 360 increments, it is the angle created from zero to 45 of those increments. And so the most general definition of an angle is going to be that it's that portion of a circle. But when we come to, say, a speed square, then what's the, what are these angles with respect to? Forget all the other numbers, but just pay attention to the numbers on the, along the hypotenuse. And always pay attention to the pivot here. When you go like this, and you get a reading of, say... 15 degrees, that's 15 degrees with respect to 90 degrees. So the pivot is just showing us that we're moving so many degrees away from 90. And coincidentally, and conveniently, that's exactly how all of our saws work. When we set the miter saw to 15 degrees, that's 15 degrees away from zero. That's why that number looks nothing like the 15 degrees on a protractor. This is how I want my miters to look, and so this jig that I'm creating here is for the table saw. We'll get to that in a moment, but for the time being, I just want to draw this shape on this piece of plywood. I have one of the lines done. How did I get this line? Knowing that it's 22 degrees, when I mark 22 degrees on this quick square, it looks like that. And this angle's not correct, so what's going on here? Well, it's, as I've said, it's 
22 and a half degrees with respect to 90. This thing's already a 90 degree angle. We have to pick a reference point. Everything with angles, and I don't usually use the term always, so I mean it. Angles are always with respect to something. Remember that. Drill that down into your brain. An angle is a meaningless number except that it's with respect to something. So this 22 and a half degree angle that we're after, we can get it with respect to 90 degrees. And so 90 degrees minus 22 and a half degrees gives us 67.5 degrees, which down here on the numbers, 67 and a half. And that's the first step to becoming dental floss close. <laughs> Or you could just trace the mirror and be done. Okay, yeah, good call. Perfect fit right there, right? <laughs> Mr. Trace the Mirror guy would end up with this problem, though. Learn to do the math for yourself. It's not that hard. And then you don't have to trust on the things that other people have already figured out for you. If you're not doing it yourself, then you're always going through problem solving with a crutch. And right now, I am speaking directly to you, the person that has that special construction calculator who's never figured out how to use basic functions on a calculator. You know, it's that special yellow calculator that they sell at the construction stores, the one that helps you figure out how many yards of concrete to order, or how long a stair stringer is, or how to determine a rafter length. Learn the Pythagorean theorem and figure out how to do volume calculations. It's easy. You shouldn't be operating a saw if you can't do these basic things. Okay, now that we've talked about viewer engagement, let's go over why you're actually here. Here's a glued up mi miter. And if we tease it apart, this is what I want to see. I want to see a notch in here so that we can insert a biscuit-like thing that ties both of these together. Now we have extremely limited space so the idea is to creep up on this notch without coming through the face of the casing. So I'm going to have to just trial and error through this, but let me tell you about the jig. For starters, there's two blades in there at the same time. In between, there's a rubber washer. I have an entire video on the subject. If you're concerned with the safety, this is not the place to discuss it. This arm provides us leverage and a handle to hold down on so that this can't go anywhere. Because the molding is just a tad proud, it really applies a lot of pressure to the piece. This block is glued and screwed and that allows me to clamp it right to the fence. And exactly in the center of our angle here, is the dead center of the blade with respect to this direction. Pretty cool. It worked pretty well. So I used the crank to determine the depth. I just used one, two, three full cranks and I didn't come through. So I'm going to tempt fate and give it a fourth. And for those of you who are still watching, Here's a really cool trick. Insert a screw, a, the biggest screw that you have, into a block of wood, and then cut the head off and turn it into a chisel. It works nice for just this situation, and it costs you nothing. So what we're left with here, when I take that center bit out, will be exactly the thickness of a piece of underlayment. And, since we know that the blade was seven and a quarter inch diameter, we can set our compass to that radius, which is three and five eighths, cut these little circles and make super simple biscuits.
this way is okay for practice, but when I'm in the big game and I have eight of these to do, I'm just going to replace the table saw with a single blade, recenter it, and just take that middle out. That satisfies. Are you?